Hi, my name is Matthew Sherwood, and my presentation is on the rise of ESG investing and its relevance to behavioral finance. I leveraged a fantastic video from the CNBC YouTube channel to learn more about this increasingly relevant topic. Welcome to Stony Brook Finance Lab channel. Let's start with the basics. What is ESG? The E stands for environmental and takes factors into consideration like carbon emissions, sustainability, and contribution to combating climate change. The S stands for social and considers factors like diversity, workplace equality, and consumer protection and animal welfare. The G stands for governance, which takes into consideration management structure, employee relations, employee and, employee and executive compensation. ESG is effectively a catch-all term for socially responsible investing. Every company has an ESG score which allows investors to assess how a company's environmental and social performance will affect its financial performance and in turn use that to determine whether to invest in the company or not. Now that we know what ESG is, let's get into the impact on investors and relevance to behavioral finance. Investors are increasingly focused on ESG. Interest in sustainable investing jumped to 85% in 2019 per Morgan Stanley. That is up from 71% in 2018. Clearly, investors are not all talk when it comes to ESG. They are backing it up with their investment portfolios. A record $45.6 billion went into the global sustainable fund universe in the first quarter of 2020 per Morningstar. Bank of America predicts money in ESG investing could rise to 15 to 20 trillion dollars due to a change in investor demographics. Corporations have also began taking their ESG role more seriously, especially as social injustice has become a worldwide trending topic in recent years. ESG has gone from simply looking at a corporation's policies and procedures to now looking at real-time behavior as it plays out in front of us. Bank of America pledged $1 billion to assist economic and racial inequality intensified by the pandemic. Cisco donated $5 million to fight racism and discrimination as a first step in combating injustice. The millennial makeup company Glossier do donated $1 million to Black Lives Matter and other Black-owned beauty businesses. Nike committed $40 million to help the Black community over the next four years. Now let's talk a little bit about what ESG has historically meant to investors. When the ESG movement began to gain popularity in the early 2000s, it was not the most fiscally responsible decision to invest in an ESG conscious company. The common belief was that socially responsible investing would eat into a company's profits and their competitive advantage. In other words, why would I as an investor select a company spending dollars on environmental and social issues instead of sharing those funds with me in the form of a dividend. Therefore, investors who chose ESG corporations in the early 2000s did so to fulfill an emotional benefit. An emotional benefit is one of the three benefits referenced in behavioral finance. It refers to the way something makes you feel internally. It's different from the other benefits discussed in behavioral finance, such as utilitarian benefits, which only considers what something can do for you. An example of an investor prioritizing emotional benefits would be to invest in a renewable energy company with modest returns instead of investing in a tobacco, firearms, or fossil fuel company with superior returns. Now let's discuss what does ESG mean to investors today? Investors now see ESG as an opportunity to identify potential risks and avoid financial disasters before they happen. In January 2020, the CEO of the largest money manager in the world, BlackRock, released a letter to its investors that stunned Wall Street. In the letter, Larry Fink told other chief executives that climate change and the decisions surrounding it would lead to a fundamental reshaping of finance. Fink continued that BlackRock's investment conviction is that sustainability and climate integrated portfolios can provide better risk adjusted returns to investors. He strongly believes that sustainable investing is the strongest foundation for client portfolios going forward. Larry Fink believes ESG investing is no longer primarily an emotional benefit anymore. It now provides the utilitarian benefits that all rational investors are seeking as well. Ignoring ESG can potentially result in financial disaster like Volkswagen investors experienced in 2017. 
The Volkswagen emissions scandal cost the company over $30 billion and resulted in a significant drop in the stock price. Now let's talk about the key takeaways from this video. I found the video on CNBC YouTube channel very informative and beneficial from a social, responsi social responsibility standpoint as well as an investment strategy standpoint. With the growing importance of environmental and social issues, I think it's a reasonable assumption that corporations' ESG scores are going to become more important, not less important. This trend allows our emotional benefit of feeling good about investing in environmentally and responsible companies to align with the utilitarian benefit of making sound financial decisions. Investing in companies with high ESG scores will likely lead to top-tier, long-term shareholder returns. I'd like everyone watching this video to take away the fact that ESG scores should always be reviewed while contemplating investment options. It is possible to be a good person while also maximizing your personal profits. Thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to this YouTube channel.